Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider Review Build for the Beta Channel, which is the build 22635.3930 for version 23H2. And in this build, we have quite a few new interesting features that we're going to cover in this video. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access, a virtual private network where VPN for shorts hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. Streaming services such as Netflix have different library options based on where you are located. Using private internet access, you will be able to watch those shows or movies that are not available in your current location. Make sure to check out private internet access in the links from the description below for a great deal. 83% discount and 4 months free. So I have to remind you again that if you want to get some new features from the beta channel earlier than others, make sure to go into the settings app and then go into the Windows update section and check get the latest updates as soon as they're available and then click on check for updates this way you get updates sooner and updates that maybe Microsoft is testing with only a small number of users and that's how you can get them earlier first of all we have some news related to the file explorer home so the file explorer home now will show shared content I think you know that we had this section for the shared section but it didn't show any files well right now file explorer will provide quick access to files files that have been shared with you and if you sign in with a Microsoft account you'll be able to view files that have been shared with your account email teams chat and more and also certain files will appear in the recent list if you've edited them and I think that is a pretty nice addition inside the file explorer now we have quite a few new things related to the taskbar so first of all Microsoft is implementing the new option that will allow you to use the shortened date and time so if you right click on the taskbar and then go to taskbar settings and then taskbar behaviors we're going to notice that Microsoft removed the previous options that we had here here inside the taskbar behaviors. So if you want to get the long version of the time and date inside the system tray, again, you're going to have to go into different sections of the settings app. So as you can see below, we have related settings. So if you go to date and time, you're going to have here the option show time and date in the system tray. And if you expand it, you're going to notice that there are two new options, show abbreviated time and date and show seconds in system tray clock. So I think that is pretty interesting. You can also enable the seconds from here and also the abbreviated time and date. Now, if we go back to taskbar behaviors, we're going to notice also notifications and actions. And here, if you expand notifications, you're going to have here the option show notification bell icon. I'm not sure why this is disabled for me right now, but from here, you're going to be able to turn on or off the notification bell icon. So I think that Microsoft did a pretty good job. I think they've categorized the settings a bit better. And it's nice that they provide the quick access inside here with the related settings for time and date and also notifications and actions. Another thing that is new inside this build related to the taskbar, we have these new and animations for the taskbar thumbnails. So I think these are pretty nice. We've tested these before and Microsoft tested these in previous builds, but right now these are coming inside the beta channel and I think that is pretty nice. And as you can see, we don't have a transition between thumbnails right now. We had one before, but I'm sure that Microsoft will work on that. But the animation that opens up thumbnails is pretty nice in my opinion, if you ask me. And I think you have a bigger thumbnail and also this close button is a bit different. One thing that has changed is also that if you open multiple tabs in the file explorer and you can also duplicate tabs. You're going to notice that these appear in the title here in the thumbnail. Also, if you have multiple windows open, for example, like this, you can have them inside the taskbar and these two will be opened up like this. And I think that is pretty nice. Microsoft improved the taskbar thumbnails quite well. Another thing that Microsoft is testing, you maybe noticed it when I went to taskbar settings. If you go to taskbar behaviors, Microsoft is testing out a new option, which is called show hover cards for inactive and pinned taskbar apps. So what this basically does, if you hover over an app or something pinned on the taskbar, Bar, you're going to get these new jump lists, which are in the very early stage right now. So it's pretty bugged. I strongly recommend against enabling this. But if you want to test it out, of course, feel free to do that. But it's being tested, not something officially announced by Microsoft, but it's being tested behind the scenes. I think that is pretty interesting. One thing that I don't like, and of course, I'm sure that Microsoft is aware of this, is that it opens instantly when you hover over it, it opens instantly. This option would be nice if we, for example, hover over something for two or three seconds to have this jump list. But of course, you can always right click to have this jump list and I think that is interesting but it's a nice little setting that Microsoft is currently testing. Also Microsoft updated the taskbar to now support first letter navigation so when keyboard focus is set to the taskbar you can press a letter and it will jump to the open or pinned app whose name starts with that letter. So for example you can press win plus t on your keyboard to focus on the taskbar and if I press f I'll be redirected to the file explorer because that is the first letter that corresponds to this app. Also pressing the letter multiple times will jump to the subsequent app which starts with that letter 
letter if there are multiple apps for that letter. And if you have the taskbar setting and then taskbar behaviors and then combine taskbar buttons and hide labels set to never, if you use this option and you have multiple windows open or tabs, rather than app name, the first letter navigation will use the window name. So along with this, pressing home and end will now move keyboard focus to the first and last items in the taskbar. So in this case, if I press Win plus T, I'm going to have to press the H button on my keyboard to focus on the file explorer because that is the window name as I am in the home page of the file explorer. And if I press H multiple times, of course, it's going to switch me over through these apps on the taskbar. So I think these are some quite nice new additions from Microsoft related to the taskbar. In this build, we're also getting the Windows Studio effects, which delivers AI based camera and audio enhancements on devices equipped with neural processing unit. You can check more info about these in the article below or on the official Microsoft blog because these work only on devices devices that have support for this, but I think this is quite interesting. In this build, we also have some news related to the start menu. So if you open up the start menu and then go to the all apps section, you're going to notice that Microsoft is testing a new section here, which will basically allow you to change the way that apps are shown here. So we're going to have alphabetical grid and category. Of course, this is not yet officially announced by Microsoft is currently being tested. So it's again in a very early stage and a pretty bugged feature. But if you want to enable it, you can play around with it. So if I go to alphabetical, of course, it's going to organize my apps alphabetically grid of course is the normal way of seeing the apps and we also have category which right now just shows us some grids with some categories that Microsoft is currently working on implementing so for example developer tools entertainment music navigation maps news and weather and others and here you're going to see a screenshot from Phantom Motion 3's Twitter which shows a .json file that contains some of the default Windows apps and the categories that they belong in so I think that is also pretty interesting this is also a really nice new addition and I'm looking forward to seeing how Microsoft is going to implement this and of course, I think we're going to have more info about this and in progress in the next few builds in the beta channel. Microsoft is also updating the UI in the Windows Share window for sharing content to an Android device that began rolling out with the build 2.2.6.3.5.3785. The option is also moved to be under nearby share in the Windows Share window. And also, this feature requires you to pair your Android device to your Windows PC using the link to Windows app on Android and phone link on your PC. Related to the Narrator app, Microsoft made several changes to improve the performance of Narrator scan mode. This is expected to make scan mode the response is much quicker, especially while using Microsoft Edge and reading through large documents. To try out scan mode, turn on narrator first, then turn scan mode on by pressing caps lock plus spacebar during a narrator session. If you use the Windows plus R command on your keyboard to open up the run box and type in here MS Info 32, then press enter, you're going to notice that the fonts used here will match the text size that you set inside setting accessibility and then text size, and I think that is great. We also have some fixes in this build, so for example, related to the start menu, Microsoft fix an issue where the all apps list wasn't being read out by screen readers in recent flights and also fix an issue causing some apps to not be sorted correctly in the all apps list when using certain display languages. Related to the taskbar and system tray, Microsoft fix an issue where keyboard focus might get lost when using shift plus tab to move through the taskbar and also they fix the issue causing you to not be able to view or interact with the taskbar after you install the update code KB5039302. This issue occurs on devices that run the Windows N edition. This edition is like other editions but lacks most media related tools. The issue also occurs if you turn off media features from the control panel. So we also have a few known issues in this build. One of them is the one that I've noticed. If you go to notifications and actions, you're going to see that this section show notification icon is grayed out. And this has a quick fix as stated by Microsoft. You can just turn off and turn on notifications. You're going to see that this is now being shown. It is no longer grayed out and you can use it. Some known issues related to the file explorer. File shared with you may not appear if there has been no interaction with that file. Keyboard focus may be lost on selection of an unselected tab item. Also, narrator may not work as expected navigating through the recent favorites and shared tab items. So this is basically the beta channel build for today. I think this is quite an interesting build and it has some really nice new features that are being tested out by Microsoft. Please let me know below in the comments what's your favorite new feature from this build. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Imani from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.